Hello everyone, welcome to ACCA Taxation Video Lectures uh, brought to you by AccountancyTube.com. We are still at capital gains tax. Uh, probably we will finish our capital gains tax in this video or the next video. Now I'm using the F6 notes again, uh, but this lecture is relevant for both F6 and P6 students. Same material is given to you in the bo both F6 and P6 notes. So that's why I'm just making one video lecture for both F6 and P6 students. If you could come to uh, page number, let me see, page number 39 of your F6 lecture notes. Let me also share the screen with you. Uh, now we are going to start uh, reliefs which are available to us in our capital gains tax. In our uh, previous videos, we have seen what the capital gains tax is, how to calculate the capital gains tax. We have also seen uh, that how to calculate the capital gains tax when we sell some shares. We have also seen that as well. Now we are going to look at the different reliefs which are available to us when we uh, are dealing with the capital gains tax. We know that we have already seen one capital gains tax relief, which was entrepreneur's relief. When I am selling my business, or I am selling assets of my business when I have seized my business, I will be uh, eligible for entrepreneur's relief. Uh, now, when I am eligible for entrepreneur's relief, I will be paying tax at the reduced rate of 10%. percent does not matter which, uh, which uh, tax band my income falls in. Uh, income tax rates uh, will be used, uh, income tax rates will be using the uh, bands first, then the remaining bands will be used against the capital gains tax. And in capital gains tax as well, the remaining bands will be used uh, against the entrepreneur relief first, then against the assets qualifying for, no, uh, then the assets not qualifying for entrepreneur relief. So say for example, if our basic rate band is 33,500, now that 33,500 uh, will be used for income tax first, then the remaining, if assuming the remaining is 10,000 pounds, then that remaining 10,000 pounds will, will be used for capital gains tax purposes. Now under the capital gains tax, if there are two types of assets, assets qualifying for entrepreneurial relief and assets not qualifying for entrepreneurial relief, then the remaining basic rate band of 10,000 pounds will be used first against the assets qualifying for entrepreneurial relief and then if there is anything left out of the basic rate band, then that will be used against the assets not qualifying for entrepreneurial relief. So that is the basic rule for taxation in uh, ACCA UK. All right. Uh, anyways, let's look at the other rules, other reliefs which are available apart from entrepreneurial relief. There are some other reliefs as well. So some reliefs, uh, we are eligible, if we get them relief, we are eligible to pay tax at the reduced rate, one of which was uh, yeah, entrepreneurial relief, which is our, in our syllabus. Now some reliefs are which defer our tax, which means that we do not have to pay tax now, but we will have to pay in future time, uh, depending on some of the conditions. Right? Now, <clears throat> as I said, if you could come, come up to page number 39 of your lecture notes, F6 lecture notes, please. That is rollover relief. Now we are studying F6 notes, uh, as you can see on your video screen as well. Uh, but this same material is given to you in, pure, in your P6 notes as well. So after finishing this lecture, you can go on and check the same material in your P6 notes as well. So you will have exactly the same material in P6. Anyway, first of all, uh, first deferral relief is rollover relief. Now rollover relief means if, say for example, I have sold an asset, if say for example, I've sold this iPad and I'm going to buy another iPad after selling this iPad, uh, then if I have, uh, I mean, whenever I've, sell this, I, whenever I've sold this iPad, if I've sold it for 100 pounds, then I go in, into the market and I buy another iPad with the same 100 pound or even more than that. What does it mean? It means the proceeds of this sales, proceed of sales of this old iPad is being used wholly to buy the new iPad. So whenever I have sold old iPad, the whole amount which I have received in sales I've invested the whole amount in buying the new asset, which is the same asset, uh, same kind of asset, which was the previous one, and the both assets are used in the business, then a rollover relief will be available. Now, what does it mean? It means that the gain which I've made on the old asset, which I've sold, I will not have to pay capital gains tax unless I sell my new asset as well. So whenever I sell my new iPad, I will have to pay 
this uh, gain uh, I will have to pay tax on the old gain which I when I have sold my old asset all right now say for example if I do not uh, invest the whole amount if I've sold this iPad for 100 pounds but when I go to the market I buy the new iPad for 80 pounds so the amount which I have not invested in this case is 20 pounds so amount which I have not invested will be taxed uh, will be taxable immediately and the amount which I have reinvested that will be deferred all right so that is our role over relief we will do one example as well so I have already put some questions into our lecture notes so we will do them as well if you <coughs> excuse me if you see uh, page number 39 it is it says roll over relief so that is old business asset assuming it is ipad i'm just giving you uh, i've just given you an example so uh, i will take the sales so i've sold my ipad then i've deducted the cost out of that now if it is a company of course we'll have to deduct the indexation allowance as well out of that uh, and the uh, remaining amount is our gain now as i said if i have not reinvested the whole amount so it says that amount not reinvested uh, it will be chargeable gain immediately right and the remaining amount will be gain rolled over which means it will be not paid straight away but might be paid later on right now the new asset which i have bought uh, that is assuming it is non depreciating asset uh, assuming it is land and building a non depreciating asset is like non uh, land and building right now uh, we know that because land and building does not depreciate so uh, the new asset is land and building uh, so we have uh, when we sell the new asset we will take the cost of the new asset so of course we have to deduct the cost now how to calculate the cost we will calculate the base cost in which we take the cost uh, cost of the asset and then we will deduct the rollover gain now rollover gain it says ABC now if you look at above when we sold the old asset the gain rollover was ABC wasn't it so that is our gain uh, gain rolled over right now that's how we calculate our uh, uh, you know the uh, that's how we calculate our rollover relief and the gain on the rollover relief all right so we have sold our old asset and amount not reinvested will be taxable immediately and amount reinvested will be taxable when the new asset will be sold uh, so the new asset is sold in the below example and so we'll take the cost of the new asset and uh, that cost will be reduced by the rollover gain uh, which we which was not taxable at that time when the old asset was sold so when it is deducted out of the cost it will reduce our cost so when it is reduce our cost of course it will increase our gain and of course then we will have to deduct the indexation allowance as well if it is a company and the remaining amount is going to be a chargeable gain. Now let's look at a, uh, let's look at a question relevant to that. Now, if you could come to page number uh, page number forty two of your lecture notes, it's a question given to you on page number forty two. Uh, rollover relief, as you can see on your screen as well. Now, Williams Limited, uh, Williams Limited uh, acquired a factory in April two thousand. Now, William Limited, it is a company. Now, retail, uh, retail price index was 170.1, that is on the date when he acquired the factory, uh, at a cost of 120,000 pounds, so that is cost. It used the factory in its trade throughout the period of ownership. Uh, in August 2015, when the retail price index was 258.4, D Limited uh, sold the factory for 220,000 pounds. Uh, so the sales is 220,000 pounds whereas the cost was 120,000 pounds so we'll take the sales then we we'll deduct the cost out of that now remaining amount is our unindexed gain as you can see below now out of that we'll have to deduct the indexation allowance so we'll take uh, RPI in the month of sales less RPI in the month of purchase divided by RPI in the month of purchase multiplied by the cost so that's our 62 to 80 is our indexation allowance. And the remaining amount after deducting the indexation allowance will be our indexed gain. Right? Now read the question again. We haven't read the whole question. Whole, whole, uh, we haven't read the, all of the question. Then it says after that, uh, in November 2015, it acquired another factory at a cost of 190,000 pounds. Now uh, he sold the old factory uh, for 220,000 pounds but he did not reinvest the whole amount in the new factory see he only invested 190000 pounds in into the new co into the new 
uh, new factory. So which means that um, amount not reinvested will be taxable immediately. So how much is not reinvested? Amount not reinvested is uh, 30,000 pounds. So that will be our taxable immediately. Now as you can see below, it says uh, uh, less rollover relief. So rollover relief basically will be the remaining and the balancing figure. Uh, and the you know, chargeable gain is amount not reinvested, which is 30,000 pounds. Now it says in negative, it's not in negative. Please correct it, it's not in negative. It, that is our uh, you know, chargeable, gain, Im uh, chargeable gain immediately, uh, immediately chargeable because that is the amount which is not reinvested. And if we take 3720 7, less 30,000 pounds, the remaining amount is our rollover gain, 7,720. Now, base cost of the second factory, if we, direct this, uh, if we see the base cost of the second factory, so the usual uh, you know, uh, questions, typical questions that you see in your uh, exam will be like this. It will ask you to calculate the base cost of the new asset. So how to calculate it? Cost of the second factory was £190,000, but this cost will be reduced by the rollover gain, which was 7720 so the remaining amount is 182,280. Uh, sorry, 182,280. Right, so that's our base cost. Now coming back to where we were before, uh, on page number 39 of your lecture notes, so we have done our rollover relief. Now if you come to page number 40, please, uh, some conditions are given for rollover relief on page number 40. So let's read these conditions. Page number 40 of your lecture notes, FC lecture notes. So uh, again, maybe rolled over, deferred, which means we will not have to pay now, but we might have to pay in the future. Where proceeds on disposal of asset, business asset are spent on replacement business asset. In order to roll over, the following conditions must be met. So what are the conditions? The old asset sold and the new asset bought both must be used uh, in trade by person or company claiming the rollover relief. The old asset sold and the new asset bought both are in either land and building or fixed plan or machinery. So I mean the example which I gave you was uh, of iPad, it was just an example, uh, but it must be uh, you know the land and building or the fixed plan or machinery. Reinvestment of the uh, proceeds received on the disposal of old asset takes place in a period beginning one year before and ending three years after the disposal. So whenever I have sold my land and building, I was giving an uh, example of iPad. So whenever I sold an iPad, the new iPad which I will buy will be uh, either before selling this one, one year before, and after three years after selling this one. So this is the four year span time uh, in which we will have to do. Right then, after that it says, a reinvestment of the proceeds received on the disposal of the old asset takes place in the period. So that's what we have done. And the next one is a new asset is uh, brought into use uh, in the trade on its acquisition. So the new asset will be used straight away whenever we have acquired it. So these are the basically conditions of our rollover relief.